Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. This is our part 14 and once again I have got 15 very latest and important questions for you for Microsoft AZ104 certification exam. Before I move any further, there is a quick announcement. This part 14 will be our second last part for our AZ104 real exam question and answer series. After this, I will publish one more part, part 15. So I welcome all of your questions, doubts and feedback so that I can incorporate those questions in our upcoming and last part 15 very soon. And as always, if you happen to like this video, please subscribe to the channel, press that bell icon and select all. This will ensure that you get all notifications for our upcoming videos. In case you are new here today or maybe you have missed any of the videos, then a quick mention that we have covered 160 questions already in our 13 previous parts. All the questions are properly explained and well backed by Microsoft documentation. So please go ahead and watch all the videos before you attempt AZ104. As a bonus, you can get PDF versions of all these 13 parts. For that, you have to answer few simple questions that are asked in these respective parts. And you will find all the answers to those questions in those respective videos itself. And in case you are looking forward for the PDF version of this part 14, then you have to tell me the correct answers for question number 167, 169 and 175. So let's start part 14. So let's open our part 14 with a scenario based question. Question number 161 says that you have an Azure subscription that contains the following resources a virtual network that has a subnet named subnet1, two network security groups named NSG VM1 and NSG subnet1, a virtual machine named VM1 that has the required Windows Server configuration to allow remote desktop connection. Now NSG subnet1 has the default inbound security rules only. NSG VM1 has the default inbound security rules and the following custom inbound security rule. You can see we have the priority set to 100, then source is any and the source port range is asterisk which means any, destination is also any and then we have destination port range 3389, protocol is UDP and the action is allowed. The question further says that the VM has a public IP address and is connected to subnet 1. NSG VM1 is associated to the network interface of VM1. NSG subnet 1 is associated to subnet 1. You need to be able to establish the remote desktop connections from the internet to VM1. The solution given here is that you add an inbound security rules to NSG subnet 1 that allows connections from the internet source to the virtual network destination for port range 3389 and uses the UDP protocol. Does this meet the goal? The correct answer for this question is no. To find out the correct solution for this business case, follow me to the next question, question number 162. Coming to question number 162, the question is exactly the same as that of 161. However, the solution is little different. So please pay attention. The solution says that you add an inbound security rule to NSG subnet 1 that allows connection from any source to the destination for port 3389 and uses TCP protocol. You remove NSG VM1 from the network interface of VM1. Does this meet the goal? And the correct answer for this question is yes. The reason here is very simple. You have to see that NSG subnet 1, this is now correctly modified with TCP protocol. So earlier we had UDP protocol and now we have TCP protocol and the port number is 3389. So always remember the port number 3389 should always be matching with TCP protocol and not with UDP protocol. And the change of protocol between two questions makes 162 as yes and 161 as no. And then we have question number 163 and it says that an administrator is deploying couple of new virtual machines in Azure subscription via automation. All virtual machines will be deployed in resource group RG07 based on ARM template that is stored in GitHub. Which two commands should the administrator use? So you can see four commands are given here and out of these four commands you have to pick two commands that can be used for the deployment using ARM template. The correct answer for this question is option A and option C. The reason is very simple because both option B and option D, these commands are used to create virtual machines from either the marketplace images or custom images. 
However, none of the commands given in option B or option D can be used for the deployment using ARM template. And that's the reason I eliminated these two options. And then we are only left with option A and option C. So guys, this is also one really good trick that I use in my examination certification. And I personally call it selection by elimination. So sometimes you are sure that some of the options are not valid options or not correct options. So eliminating those will leave you with the correct answers or at least it will leave you with lesser options to choose from. Our question number 164 says that you have a computer named computer one that has a point to site VPN connection to an Azure virtual network VNet one. Now point to site connection uses a self signed certificate from Azure. You download and install the VPN client configuration package on a computer named computer two. Now you need to ensure that you can establish point to site VPN connection to VNet one from computer two. The solution given here is you export the client certificate from computer one and install the certificate on computer two. Does this meet the goal? The correct answer for this question is yes, this solution does satisfy this business case. Now let's understand the reasoning behind it. So this is the reason you can read that each client computer that connects to a virtual network or VNet using point to site must have a client certificate installed. That's exactly what our solution also says that we install a client certificate. Further, it says that you generate a client certificate from the self signed root certificate and then export and install the client certificate. If the client certificate is not installed, the authentication fails. However, in our case, we have installed the client certificate and thus you can establish point to site VPN connection to VNet one from computer two. Now there can be many variations of this question. So Microsoft can give you a lot of different solution for the same question to confuse you. So let me show you some more variations of the same question so that you are well prepared when this question comes. So now in the question number 165, we have the exactly same question. However, this time the solution is different. This time the solution says that you modify the Azure Active Directory authentication policy. And of course, we know that this will not solve this business case. So the correct answer is no. And just to reinforce, I've given the justification here as well. A client computer that connects to a VNet using point to site must have a client certificate installed. Now showing you the third variation of the same question. And this time the solution is that you join computer two to Azure Active Directory. And of course we know the correct answer is no. Question number 167 says that you have an Azure subscription that contains the following resources. We have 100 Azure virtual machines, 20 Azure SQL database, 50 Azure file shares. You need to create a daily backup for all the resources by using Azure backup. What is the minimum number of backup policies that you must create? And your options are 1, 2, 3, 120 or 170. And the correct answer is 3. The reason is that you should create a separate backup policy for each of the component. So one for Azure Virtual Machine, one backup policy for SQL Database and one backup policy for file share. If you have some questions around backup Azure Virtual Machines, then this is a great page. This page will answer probably all the questions that you have around Azure Backup Virtual Machine. And the best part is that all the information around this backup is gathered in the form of question and answer. And I really love these kind of fact or frequently asked question and answer format of Microsoft documentation. You can find the link of this page in the description box. Moving on, our question number 168 says that you are troubleshooting a performance issue for an Azure application gateway. You need to compare the total request to the failed request during the past six hours. What should you use? And your options are metrics in application gateway, diagnostics log in application gateway, NSG flow log in Azure Network Watcher or connection monitor in Azure Network Watcher. And the correct answer for this question is option A, metrics in application gateway. Moving on with question number 169 and it says that you create the following resources in a subscription an Azure Container Registry instance named Registry 1 and then you create an Azure Kubernetes service cluster named Cluster 1. Now you create a container image named App 1 on your administrative workstation. 
you need to deploy app one to cluster one. What should you do first? And your options are, should you create a host pool on cluster one or should you run the Docker push command or run the kubectl apply command or should you run the az aks create command? The correct answer for this question is option B, run the Docker push command. And here is a quick side note. An Azure container registry, the container registry, we are talking also about container registry here. So an Azure container registry stores and manages private Docker container images similar to the way Docker Hub stores the public images. You can use the Docker command line interface or Docker CLI for login, push, pull and other operations on your container registry. Now let's move to question number 170. The question says that you have an Azure subscription that contains the resource groups as shown in the following table. Now here you can see we have two resource groups, RG1 located in West US, then RG2 located in East US. Moving on, the question says that RG1 contains resources shown in the following table. So we have storage one, we have virtual network named VNet1, NIC1 which is a network interface card, then we have disk one, we have virtual machine and you can also observe the locations here. Further ahead, the question says that VM1 is running and connects to NIC1 and disk one. Now NIC1 connects to VNet1 and RG2 contains a public IP address named IP2 and is in East US location. IP2 is not assigned to a virtual machine. You have to choose all what is applicable or possible. Your options are you can move storage one to RG2 or you can move NIC1 to RG2 or if you move IP2 to RG1, the location of IP2 will change. So what according to you is possible? And the correct answer for this question is option A, you can move storage one to RG1. Just to give you more details on the other two options, you cannot move a NIC or network interface card to a new resource group if it's already attached to a virtual machine. Coming to the third one, it's very important that you understand that Azure public IP are always region specific and you cannot move a Azure public IP from one region to another. Moving on with question number 171, it says that your company wants to move all the services to Azure Kubernetes service. Which of the following component contributes to the monthly Azure charge? Your options are master node per deployed pod or per node VM. And the correct answer for this question is option C per node VM. And this is because with Kubernetes, organizations only pay for the virtual machine instance, storage and network resources consumed by the cluster. Moving ahead with question number 172, it says that you need to resolve the Active Directory issue. What should you do? Your options are listed here. And the correct answer for this question is option A, run the IDFX tool, then use the update action. Just to tell you more about IDFX tool, the IDFX is used to perform discovery and remediation of identity objects and their attributes in an on-premises Active Directory environment in preparations for the migration to Azure Active Directory. IDFX is intended for the Azure Active Directory administrators responsible for directory synchronization with Azure Active Directory. For IDFX, I can just say that it's a lesser known Azure service and you should read more about it. And to help you further, this is the Microsoft documentation on IDFX tool. Here you can understand what is a IDFX tool and also you can understand how it works. The link for this Microsoft documentation is available in the description box. Quickly moving to question number 173, it says that which of the following is the Kubernetes agent that processes the orchestration request and schedules running the requested containers? Your options are container, node or kubelet. The correct answer for this question is option C, kubelet. Marching towards question number 174, you have an Azure subscription, you are deploying an Azure Kubernetes service cluster that will contain multiple pods. The pods will use Kubernetes networking. You need to restrict network traffic between pods. What should you configure on AKS cluster? And your options are the Azure network policy, the Calico network policy, or the pod security policy. And the last one is an application security group. The correct answer for this question is option B, the Calico network policy. And here I present question number 175, which is the last question for our part 14 of our AZ104 real exam question and answer series. 
The question says that you are part of infrastructure team. You need to configure networking for the Azure Kubernetes service. Which of the following service would be the best for internal only application that support the other workloads within the cluster? Your options are load balancer, cluster IP or node port. And the correct answer for this question is option B cluster IP. And here is some more details on cluster IP. So cluster IP creates an internal IP address for the use within the EKS cluster. This is good for the internal only application that supports other workloads within the cluster. And that's the reason we have chosen cluster IP as the answer for this question. I hope you like the cluster of these 15 questions in our part 14. Friends, before I close this video, there is one quick announcement. There will be one more part that is part 15, which will be our last part of our AZ104 real exam question and answer series. Post that, I am planning to start a new exam series and I am eagerly waiting for your suggestions and feedback on which Azure certification you want me to make the next series on. And please do not forget to like the video if you are new here, subscribe to the channel and share these videos with anyone who is learning Azure. Till we meet again, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.